Dear brothers and sisters, yesterday we started uh, training ourselves again in the art of being alive, being there, especially with all the opportunities of listening to the bell, listening to our body, listening to our feelings, and today we just continue this. Today the theme of our practice is uh, being there for our emotions. I can tell you that sitting here there's quite a bit of emotion. There's a lot of love too. Um, I have to say it's a happy moment. <laughs> also a difficult moment. So you remember that we are training, we are enjoying just the power of one breath. When we breathe in and breathe out, we can really feel that it's not an idea, it's not a label that we put in our brain. Here's the in-breath, here's the out-breath. Long in-breath, long out-breath. Short in-breath, short out-breath. Shaking in-breath, shaking out-breath. It's not up here. We're feeling our breathing in our entire body. And we know that we can feel the parts of the body that are directly involved in breathing in and out. Of course, our, our trachea, our lungs, our abdomen, but we know that we are breathing for all the cells in our body. So we're sending the breath all the way down to the tips of our toes, to the tips of our fingers, to the tips of our hair. And there, there is this bridge with our breath. There is a bridge very gentle, very warm between body and mind. When I am fully in my body, then I recognize many things happening in there. And. Um, for example, I was telling you about the shaking. I can feel also my heart beating strongly. Can you also feel your heart beating now? Yeah. So our body is say, telling us things through the feelings our body is speaking to us. And we have time this week to listen to what the body says. This is quite rare, I think. I don't know if all of you have often time to just feel what the body is saying, but <clears throat> I know I, I, often, I often don't bother to to remember that my body has something to say and to know what it is that my body is saying. The language of the body is, for me, is the, the language of feelings. And um, it seems that in this week together, always coming back to just what's going on now inside of ourselves, around ourself. We have a privilege of, um, of recognizing things that have been going on for a while and we didn't feel them before or we didn't have enough space to fully feel them. Maybe we felt something but maybe we had to 
push it aside or to just go on with business with what we have to do, what we feel is important. When I am with you in this retreat, there's a question of what is it that's really important? How can it be that so many young people realize this desire, realize this dream of coming to Plum Village to be together, to be with themselves, first of all? I think all of this is part of the theme of emotions, what is alive in us. Emotions, the, the word emotion, I like to remember that it comes from the word moving. Something is moving. Something is alive. So emotions, and particularly strong emotions, we might often think and believe um, that they are a burden, that they are handicapping us in a way. Sometimes it's true. Mm. And for me, because of this quality, this aspect of moving and aliveness of our emotions, our feelings. Um, I want to value what, is, what, what that is, value that message from, from the body and from the mind. Today I would like to just um, give you an, a little bit of understanding uh, from, from Buddhist psychology, but mostly from the way that we live in a community, taking care of ourselves, taking care of each other, taking care of the feelings. And I hope that it is helpful for everyone. I'm going to draw on the board. One of the first images that helps me the most in uh, the way we understand the Psyche Soma here is the five rivers. So probably many of you have heard of, of this uh, way of understanding. We, th we speak of five rivers of our being so we can't really understand ourselves as an entity that is um, complete or closed to the rest of the world. But we can understand ourselves and have a view, some kind of view, knowing that it's always limited, with five rivers at least. <laughs> and the first one, is the body. The body is a river. We say that the body is a river because it's always changing. Mm. I think as young people you know that your body is changing all the time. You're not feeling your body in the same way today as you felt yesterday, and certainly tomorrow or this afternoon or in, a, in 10 minutes, your body is also going to be different. the first river. And very closely linked to this first river, we'll draw a second one, which we call the feelings.
and they are also changing all the time. In fact, um, you could say that a feeling doesn't last for more than a tenth of a second. So in just one second, we have already many feelings that are linked to the body or to the mind. A river of perceptions. Perceptions, maybe in our, um, our way of speaking, we, commonly we understand that as what we perceive through our senses, and that's part of what they are, uh, but there's also much more. Maybe we can understand that as our, our, our view, our viewing, our, what, how we perceive ourself, how we perceive the environment. And that's also changing all the time. And it's maybe not uh, so clear to, to recognize that. Mm. But I think it's very key, this, this river of the perceptions is very key um, to how we can take care of ourselves and of our beloved ones, of the world. Because with a perception that is narrow, we know that we suffer more. With a mind that's more free of views, of ideas, of uh, labels, of judgments, we know that we are also freer, happier. And um, something that's key also is to know that obviously the perceptions are changing but to know that most of the time they are wrong. Our perceptions are wrong. Ninety-nine percent wrong. <laughs> makes it difficult. <laughs> mm. But it makes it maybe easy to just think, oh, I know I don't have the right view. In any case, I don't have the right understanding of myself or of you. So I can um, just start from there, knowing that whatever I was thinking that you were, whoever I thought you were, actually you are not that. And myself too. I think that I understand myself. So I think I understand myself, and I think when I look at you, what I see and what I hear is correct, but it's not most of the time, 99% of the time. I only understand this much of who you are. The next uh, river has a funny name. In Buddhism, so just for the joke, I write MF, and then those of you who have been to Plum Village before, you're gonna tell us what, that's, what that means. Mental formations. It also stands for my friends. These are our states of mind. The reason why we call them formations is because they are formed by many conditions, and they are formations of the mind consciousness, states of the mind consciousness, and also 
flowing all the time, changing all the time. So from one second to the next, even if a state of mind seems to be the same, like sadness or frustration or peace, but it's really evolving all the time. And then the last stream or river is consciousness. Very hard to define. We can understand it as our subconscious, our store consciousness, which is always flowing too, always changing. But the more we practice together and the more it seems that it's really encompassing so much more. And this morning or yesterday, you remember when we practiced touching the earth? We contemplated that the earth, Mother Earth, is really everywhere including in ourself, in our body, in our mind, in our consciousness, and the universe also, the stars. So this consciousness is an immense, immense stream. Mm. Since we are defining our our being so we can understand ourselves. Here we can really understand it as our, our, our deep store consciousness where all the potential experiences are dormant, are sleeping, and they can, they can manifest anytime depending on what we, what we encounter in our life. I wanted to focus a little bit on the levels of our being that have to do with the perceptions and the feelings. Um, if I want to share with you about my practice of taking care of strong emotions, I feel that this is where um, it's most helpful to start because I recognize that really all my strong feelings, the moments of uh, strong fear or anxiety or anger or despair, they are so closely linked with my thinking. Um, often I am actually a prisoner because of the way I think then I kind of uh, dive into feelings such as anger, especially anger. And um, I think we can understand why our mind has so much so much power, because a, thing, a thought that we are generating has influence on the, on, our, on the feelings we're going to have, on how we're going to feel. When I believe a, a certain story, a certain judgment, a perception, when I believe it to be true, to be real, then it can really make me angry. It, can me, it makes me... My, my universe narrows down because I believe, I am sure that this is how it is. So 
here we're always practicing to ask ourselves, are you sure? Are you sure about this? Are you sure that the situation you're viewing in this way can only be seen from that angle? And that there is only what you're, what you're seeing is really the whole story, the whole picture. So this is on the level of mind consciousness, the thinking, believing, uh, building perceptions, building a view, and also kind of repeating stories and conversations inside. I don't know if you have that experience. Sometimes it's because I want to understand that I repeat the story inside of my head. So I want to analyze every detail of what's happened. Um, but I, really what I'm doing is only approaching from the same angle all the time and only, we can say, ruminating the same scenario. And that causes seeds of feelings of strong emotions. Um, and I, I think that it's not so much a problem that my thinking causes an emotion. It's the most natural thing in, in our being because we have these five rivers that I was telling you about and they're always flowing. So it's very, very natural and in fact it's it, be, it, means you're, it means you're alive, it means you're healthy if it, if it is what is happening, that your thinking triggers feelings and emotions. I guess the problem is more when, when I'm just caught in those judgments and stories and perceptions and, and really re just repeating that the whole time, and then also not allowing myself to feel anything else than, than these uh, difficult emotions like anger or despair. So a practice that we can all do is to be there with our feelings, our emotions, just for what they are not for the story that they're telling us. Not to repeat the story in our head, not to approach it from the same angle again, try to analyze it, analyze it in even more detail, but to fully be there with the emotion. For example, if I feel anger, rather than being with the anger on the level of my thinking, an angry story in my head. I'm going to come down on a level of how it is manifesting in my being, that anger. And many times it can be a tension in the chest or in the hands or in the jaws. So try to spot in the body Where the, where the feeling speaks. And just feel that part of the body. And because our body is a river, feel how, how that, that the cells in that part of the body experience the anger or the fear. And see that it's, it's moving somehow. I'm going to make another drawing now.
there's an image that um, that Tai has given about the place uh, where I'm living now in near Paris. We have a small a small uh, practice center, and one day um, Tai said that there's a storm in a cup of water. So I see this kind of whirlpool. Inside this tiny cup of water. Because I have such a limited perception, and it seems that the whole world is summed up into a tiny, a tiny space. So one conflict or one emotion makes a, a huge uh, tornado, but it's only it's only a, in, a, in the cup of water. At the center of the tornado, the hurricane, there's my strong emotion. And um, on the outside, there's the, the, the thinking, the story, the judgment. We know that usually it's it's, it's quieter to be in the center of the, of the hurricane. And, um, and to remember this cup with a whirlpool in it, um, it's, it's helpful because it helps us to have, um, to take the initiative of opening the perspective knowing that the emotion is just an emotion. It's just one in the river. And we don't have to die because of just that one emotion. Sometimes we want to die because it's so strong. We want to dig a hole and put ourselves in it under, under the earth. At least that's, that's what I often feel. So remove that cup. And recognize the emotion for what it is. We can fully be there for it. We don't have to minimize it. We can really honor it for what it is, but we don't have to think that it's the whole world. And to, to decide that our whole life is just that. <coughs> we have many beautiful practices to be with our, our painful emotions. <coughs> We've already learned how to breathe deeply how to walk peacefully. And I want to make it clear that these are not practices that cover up an emotion. These are practices that help us to be with the emotion, to honor them, to acknowledge them, to feel them. And to let them be. And when we let them be, we can also let them be until they don't need to be anymore, until they just go by themselves. So we let them go. But we don't push them to go. 
I think that's a subtle tendency that even as advanced practitioners, I know I still do, I want to do that often. I want to say, my dear anger, uh, you need to go away now. I, I, don't have, uh, I don't have a need of you. I don't have space and actually I have other things to do than to be there for you. So please um, make way. <laughs> that's, not, um, that's not so helpful. And um, another subtle tendency or habit that we can have is to, to be desensitized. So to decide that, um, well, it really doesn't matter that I'm angry. Um, I, I'm more than my emotion anyway, so um, I, can, you know, I can go on with my business. Or, Or, yeah, that anger doesn't, doesn't really touch me. That's quite a, a violent attitude towards oneself, to be desensitized. Yesterday we were speaking of how mindfulness um, can be generated by breathing, by walking in the present moment, aware of our body, breathing or walking, and that mindfulness arising is there to, to touch very gently the other kinds of mental states. And that's why I understand that mindfulness is not to be unsensitive. Mindfulness really touches For me, I would define mindfulness as a kind of sensitivity that leads me to solidarity for my, my mental state or for the other person, for something else. I recognize the object of my mindfulness and I get a kind of, uh, a kind of connection that makes me feel for it. I don't get drowned in a, in a passionate or fusional relationship, but I can touch the person or the thing that I am mindful, mindful of, and I feel solidarity for that object. Maybe we can have a sound of the bell. Sorry, I'm not a best friend of uh, technology. There's one uh, exercise with the breathing that uh, I find really beautiful, is when we do the deep relaxation. We can, we've done that sometimes with children because they like to be creative. Um, if you know how to make a, a folded boat with a piece of paper <coughs> and you lie down and you place the boat on your, on your stomach, on your abdomen and then you just, you just watch the boat sailing on the waves and it's very lovely um, when there is an emotion I just watch that boat going through the emotion with me and uh, it feels very safe.
There's also poems that we use in our practice. And I'm sure you have seen them because we post them like in the bathrooms. Uh, to be mindful of the water, for example. And one of these poems that we have is especially when we're angry. So um, it basically says that when there's anger in me, I know it doesn't feel good and I know it makes me feel not beautiful. It's not that I am not beautiful, but the feeling, I feel not, uh, not blooming. So I return to myself in order not to lose myself in anger. Another one of these uh, poems for when we are angry, angry with each other, is um, being angry, I look at my, my loved one and um, imagine ourselves a hundred years from now, where we will we be? Aware of impermanence, I can also let anger go. There's another, another kind of strong emotion that I'd like to mention this morning. It's called restlessness. Or we can also call it agitation. It's a state of being where it's really hard to sit. It's really hard to not do anything in fact, is the energy that pushes us to try to do everything at once, to try to do multitasking, to try to resolve every situation. And it's a kind of impatience also. And um, it's good to call it by its name because it comes up often, more often than I, than I recognize. Even when the bell sounds, there's the sound of the bell or there's the ringing of the phone and my body kind of automatically stops because it's been trained to do that. But inside, I want to, I want to move on, I want to get things done, I want to, I want to speak, I want to I want to run, run away from, from here and now. And it's also this energy that pushes me to go consume things uh, that I don't really need or that even harm me. It's good to have a name for that, uh, for that state of being. And from time to time, to, to call it, say, restlessness, you're there, aren't you? What is it that you want? What is it that's so important that you're making me rush like this? Where are you actually leading me? If I follow you my whole life, Where are you leading me? I remember that story of um, a native people from, from Colombia. <coughs> they came for the first time to, to Paris and they were taken in the metro. And uh, they asked the people who were um, making them visit the city why are you digging those holes in the earth everywhere, those huge uh, tunnels? And um, of course the person, the Parisian person answered, well, it's, so, it's just so we can move faster to where we need to go. And 
so that one of these uh, member of the members of the Indian, the Colombian uh, people, said, "But where, where exactly do you need to get faster? Because we're all going to the same place, and that is, that is, either it's here and now, or it's uh, the end of our life. All of us are going in the same direction." In a retreat like this one, I feel that this is um, an essential, an essential question. Why and where are we rushing so fast? Why is it so important that we want to be so efficient, so perfect, so the best? And a retreat like this one is a kind of piece of evidence that just being, just being with one another and allowing, allowing oneself and allowing our friend to also just be who they are and who they need to be now is a kind of revolution. I feel it's really the, the revolution we need. Mm. Often Thai says, as young people in the wake up community, we want to change the course of civilization. Maybe we can ask, well, what is uh, the course that I see today of civilization? that I'm worried about and that I feel that needs to change and towards which other direction could we go? And in this sense, um, practicing with strong emotions is also I feel a key to to taking care of our our civilization because of course we want to save this beautiful planet but I know for myself that many times the place where I am from which I want to save the planet is not a place of peace is a place of restlessness and it doesn't it doesn't help it doesn't help the earth so this morning i had my breakfast um, in the dharma body forest if you don't know what what where that place is it's just behind you the the wood the oak trees and there are some hazelnuts and elder elder trees um, dogwood trees there's a lot of ivy on the ground and i thought this is the real this is the dharma talk this is the teaching It's there all the time. Nature is there all along. And nature is there all along to embrace our emotions. Not just outside in the trees, but in here, in our body. There's a natural capacity of embrace and of healing in our body. And that's also what Brother Fabhu shared yesterday when he said, um, Relaxation is a medicine that is right, right here inside of you. So nature is um, a very powerful remedy for our suffering. And we don't need to grasp nature to be healed. We just need to be with nature. 
You need to take a walk, take a swim, watch the squirrels, and also as a way to make our perceptions a little bit more right or a little bit less wrong, we need to perceive as nature, use our, our earth senses, our, our animal senses, our vegetation senses. I mean by that, that imagine you, instead of having those human eyes, Imagine you had the eyes of a spider and now what the world what does the world look like Or imagine instead of having these ears you're using say the roots of um, of a beech tree how does that how does that sound As humans, we are so intelligent and so creative, and we can really do so much. However, we can't just be humans. We can't be humans cut off from the rest of life's intelligence. and to take care of our strong emotions, to, to generate strong emotions also of uh, fulfillment that is long-lasting. I feel that it's essential to use um, our other senses to open, open our, our perspective. A wonderful exercise, um, just to end, that I would like to encourage you to try, um, is, um, is the five gratitudes. Um, just because we are, we are connecting with nature, we know that we need to be fed, and we need to be nourished if we want to take care and heal. We need to be strong. We need to have the resources of, uh, of peace, of uh, well-being, of joy. And that's why I've been using this exercise of uh, the five at least gratitudes nearly every day, at the end of the day. Maybe you can do that during the retreat because it's easy, you have time for it. Um, other people might be doing at the same time and we have the noble silence period that is ideal to reconnect and remember. So you can write down what were the five beautiful things that brought you uh, a moment of peace or a moment of well-being today. A little bit like the happiness check with our, the good conditions of our body, but also the things that we receive as gifts from life, we can also do that. There's one thing I forgot to mention and I know it's very important. I will regret if I don't say this. When we speak of the, the psyche in Buddhism and we speak of the seeds in our store consciousness, the seeds that give rise to emotions such as joy or anger, um, one thing we've learned is that we can't discriminate between these seeds. Of course, we can name them. We can say, this is my seed of despair. This is my seed of uh, quietness, stillness. And we can know also 
quite clearly whether it takes us in a direction of happiness or suffering. Um, but we can't discriminate against them as being uh, negative or positive, or good or bad. A seed of anger is not a bad thing. That's also why we shouldn't try to push it, push it away or get rid of it. We learned here that seeds are indeterminate. So there's really not uh, a sign on them that says, I absolutely need to have only, um, only kindness and only peace and only happiness. Okay, so during this retreat, you don't, try, you don't need to try to have just that. Maybe it's, maybe it's lucky if you have a moment where a strong seed of despair or, or frustration or irritation comes up because you have all the conditions to welcome that emotion. And you can see that really there's, um, there's no reason to hate that part of ourself. And um, the image that goes with that, the fact that our seeds are not neutral but indeterminate, for me is the, the plants again, the wild plants. Uh, I have some, some kind of fascination for wild plants, particularly the edible ones. And um, I, I've come to know that most of the wild plants actually you can you can consume. You will not you will not get sick from them. You have to know which ones uh, can make you sick because there are a few. But all of the plants that nature provides, they are good for something. If they are not good for eating, they are good for making some kind of uh, balance and they're good for other 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 animals that need to consume them so i just wanted to give that beautiful image now we're going to listen to the sounds of the bell and return to ourselves thank you for your attention